Uh, so we're back after a couple of weeks. I am still under the weather, so this is not going to be a very long marathon night. We're going to do a couple of uh, episodes, though. And um, uh, by way of quick introduction, very quick, just a one-sentence thing, we're going to go around the table. I'm Dave Wildson. I'm the Game Master <coughs> for the game. This is the Wilders game, and to my left is... I am uh, play Raven Alexium. I'm Glenn Lavalley, and I'm the wizard of this troop. That's my it. turn? That's your turn. Hi, I'm Amanda, and I'm also known as Josephine Smith, the sharpshooter. But I also drive a mean bullwhip. Ooh, a bullwhip. Hi there. My name is Janice. But in our game, I am Lavinia Rose. I am both the healer and, well, a little bit different than that. You'll find out. I would say you're an unhealer sometimes. <laughs> All, only if they're undead. I'm Robert Woodbury, and I'm uh, Percival Redfeather, and I am a ranger, and I have been afflicted lately with the weird tiger virus or something so <laughs> we, we get to find out all about that hello i'm ian little and i'm playing the part of thaddeus poindexter and i have many skills Whoa. he's a rogue <laughs> okay um so a quick review of where we left off in the game last time um i'm going to jump a little bit back further than that in the world, you guys discovered a portal system a couple of months ago. And you use that portal system. You pick one that you thought you liked the name of, Lumina Cove. You ended up on a coast. And uh, you uh, ended up uh, with uh, Thaddeus discovering an underwater shipwreck and then disappearing. The rest of the party went looking for him. I found some underwater caverns in this same area. And you were approached by Merfolk who uh, told you, and I think this is just about the end, almost the end of uh, the last session that we did, which was three weeks ago now. Uh, the end of that session, the merfolk uh, approached uh, the rest of the party and told you that you were being summoned by somebody named Nareo and that you were summoned to a wedding. Uh, they then uh, escorted you to um, their mode of transportation through the sea that they were taking on, which was a giant whale. I've got the adventure screen up behind me. Is that his name? And that uh, is the whale's name. Uh, you, we can pretend if you Virus? wish that you asked Virus? you you asked the uh, captain who was uh, uh, actually driving the whale, and the whale's name is Ferris. And um, uh, yes, he is now deposited you at the city of the merfolk this is one of the cities of the merfolk and this city is called biminus and you are just arriving there uh the whale has just landed uh thaddeus is not with you you don't know where he is yet. and as the whale lands at the outskirts of the city and uh rests on the ocean floor um there are some merfolk there that are waiting uh, the captain, uh, who's controlling the whale, uh, turns around, and uh, the first person that he immediately goes to is Josephine, and gives her kind of a big smile, like a hi, how you doing, as he helps her untie her uh, harness that's around her waist. You were all tied to leads or reins of the whale so that you would not be lost as it was swimming through the ocean. Uh, other merfolk swim up and they uh, untie the reins or the harnesses that are attaching uh, Percy and Lavinia and Raven uh, to their reins as well. And uh, they begin to guide you uh, down this main thoroughfare of the city towards this, what probably you guess must be a palace near the end of the city. Um uh, while they're guiding you, uh, the captain uh, seems to be keeping pace with Josephine with a big smile on his face. <laughs> and uh, 
and uh, seems to be wanting to attempt to strike up a conversation with her. He tries a couple of times in uh, halting Latin, but uh, Josephine, you, you don't understand Latin, do you? I don't understand Latin, but I understand men. And... <laughs> <laughs> Good point. I'm just like... <laughs> As as he is as he is keeping pace with you and, and you're all moving forward, all of a sudden this trident comes out of nowhere, lands in the seafloor right at his feet, and he spins around and he looks and you see over to the side a blonde mermaid that is all clearly not impressed, and he suddenly very quickly swims away from you towards her. Um, the rest of the merfolk. Uh, just treat the rest of you uh, normally, although a couple of the mermaids seem to be trying to make eyes at Raven and at Percy and uh, sizing them up, I guess, as prospects. One of them swims a little closer to Percy and then she's like, <laughs> and, and she smells something. I don't know. It's something like wet cat or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it surprises her and she backs off quite a bit yes, um, yes. then uh, there are a couple of others that are a couple of mermaids that are sizing up Raven as he goes by and they're whispering and they're looking at him and uh, uh, you hear one of them commenting to the other one something to the to the effect of too scrawny something like that <laughs> Because, of course, he's a little wizard. Um, squishy. A squishy wizard. <laughs> squishy wizard. You arrive at uh, this large opening into what is apparently an open-air hall, and uh, you're held there. You're basically, there are some, what look like much bigger mermen that were more like elite guards, and they stop you right there, and you're just basically waiting outside the hall. While this is happening, Nereo... <laughs> Oh, yes, Simon, that's our dog, Simon, giving us a sound check. Thank the you very much. Open. You know it isn't it. While this is happening, Nereo, who is Lord of the Mermen, and I've got him up on the screen behind me now, okay. uh, he uh, has been it's, having... It's still not popping up on Adventure. It's popping up. It or just screen. says see, scene, nope. doesn't it? It doesn't say screen. It, that's what you get when you pop up screen. Yeah, so that's fine. I'm not sure if you're... Uh, because right now it's because Nereo. it says Nereo behind you, and it says Friss right there. Hmm. Mm. So the scenes are going to be visible to you as I show them, but they're not going to be visible to the audience except a little mm -hmm. bit in the back. I can't fix that problem. Can I can't put, put it on the okay. the TV. I was going to try to. Okay. The problem I have putting them on the TV is getting them there. Yeah. Okay. Um. So they will, however be uh, shown on our website and uh, right. I'm going to post them on the website and then everybody will be able to go have a look at the different scenes on the website okay. uh, because we are starting now to post by the way the map section has been expanded your biography has been updated I saw that you've been busy yes <laughs> there's a whole bunch of work done on the website uh, also we have something else we haven't uh, discussed I'll get back to the adventure in a moment but uh, we have patreon now yay we have Patreon, and not only do we have Patreon, but we actually have one $5 membership on Patreon, Ooh. and we have got two of our posters available for sale in our Patreon shop. That is the Wanted poster of Percy and the fortune-telling poster of Madame Lavinia. They're 10 bucks each. People can buy them straight outright, but if they buy a $5 membership, they can download them for free. So it's a good deal for them. There's also a couple of other screens or maps or things like that. So somebody uh, there said they wanted to zoom in on the blush. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that. You're still you're still blushing. Awesome. I, now he's blushing, blushing again since he read it. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, oh great, uh, leaving leaving our technical problems behind us and just uh, pushing forward with. Uh, all of the other cameras that we have, thank God. Well, yeah. Um, we were switching to Thaddeus, who was talking to Nereo. <clears throat> Nereo had 
had uh, charged <laughs> Thaddeus. Oh, wait, we still we still haven't come into contact with Thaddeus. No, right? you this are a, waiting this outside this watery hall. Okay. So right now, Thaddeus has been uh, discussing with Nereo. Nereo had offered him a dowry. Um, and uh, if you saw the videos, you will know what I'm talking about as far as the dowry goes. And that dowry, by the way, I do have a screen of it. That dowry looks, is it showing up? Looks like that. Yep. It's very pretty. And uh, has all of the things that we discussed. It's got green rope that you've never seen before. It's got a couple of amazing long uh, dirk slash fillet knives. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of arrow like clusters and gems and things like that. So if he gets married, he gets all this loot? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a good deal. You should do it. <laughs> I have some questions. <laughs> all right. So is that what you're saying to Nereo? Uh, well, he asked me if I have any questions, and that's when we ended it. All right. <clears throat> so what questions fact, do you have? I do have? have some questions, Your Excellent. Majesty. Um, just wondering, and I really don't mean to be rude, but I'm just wondering... Um, what age is Keenan? What age is Keenan? So Nereo stops to think for a moment and starts to count on his fingers and says that, and I wish I had a deep Nereo voice for this, you know. It's hard to keep track of who was born when, but by my calculations, it should be somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 years ago. Ah. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 years. So legal in California. I think so. <laughs> Bit of an edge cap. Uh, uh, and I'm just wondering, what is the acceptable period of courtship? You certainly did come up with questions, didn't <laughs> there you? There you go, some real questions. <laughs> Nerea was surprised by this, and then realizing that you are, you know, obviously not from their culture, uh, he says to you that... In their culture, they don't have courtship. That the type of thing that you would perhaps be used to you in your culture. In their culture, uh, it's kind of a uh, you catch them and you marry them in the same day while they're still fresh. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> oh yuck! I see. Um, <laughs> they explains to you that this has been since they've been living under this curse of not being able to have any uh, male merfolk descendants. Uh, and he has got 50 daughters. Wow. And for those of you who are wondering, by the way, uh, you can you can look up in uh, Greek mythology, you can look up Nereus, N-E-R-E-U-S, and you'll understand where all of this mythology is coming from because the whole idea is is that most of the mythology that we have on Terra comes from true events that have happened in era and so yes uh the tradition of uh, of uh their culture is that uh the uh the mermaids catch their sailors or their landsmen and uh they marry them now in terran mythology part of the reason that they did that was because supposedly according to the terrans the mermaids had no souls and they needed to have a capture a sailor uh, for, I don't know, to steal their soul or whatever. But in the Reo's culture, the reason that they, they're doing it is because this is uh, what they are offered. They're offered the, the, the landsmen that marry into the, uh, the landsmen that marry into uh, the merfolk, uh, in addition to receiving a dowry, begin to receive some of the powers of the merfolk by virtue of the magical wedding armband that they wear. Uh, they are allowed to morph and they can breathe underwater and all of the other things that uh, Nereo passes on to them as father of all of this particular tribe of merfolk. Well, it, it seems that we already have a member of our group that can breathe underwater, not <laughs> really a problem. So, right. He doesn't and need so, modification. The rest of us might, but. 
Mm-hmm. So Nureo has had some discussion with him before about that, uh, that uh, that obviously he's got something hereditary in his past. So what other questions, Nureo, Nureo asks, what other questions well, do you have? Well, I was uh, wondering what sort of training would be available to me to learn the culture of your people prior to the wedding. All of that training Another takes place after the wedding. I, I see. Um, how long does it take for um, children to reach adulthood? Usually it takes at least 40 years ah. for merfolk, for their children to reach adult, adulthood. Okay. I see. And, and uh, what sort of training would be available to me to learn <coughs> trade here so that I may support my family? Nereo is confused for a moment, and he, he and he responds to you, and he says, "What does this word trade mean? Do you mean where you trade with skill, other people, or skill manufacturing items for use, or or um, some way to support my family if I'm going to be here for that forty years or so? At least forty years." So Nereo explains to you that. Uh, his culture uh, is is a uh, culture that's uh, unlike uh, the cultures that you may have been used to on land. This is a culture that that uh, although that they have a city that they dwell in that they've built uh, from natural materials, that uh, they don't have uh, the usual. Uh, the usual types of things that you're used to in your culture, such as professions, they are uh, the equivalent, I guess, to what we would think of as a hunter-gatherer culture. So what that means is that all of the merfolk, both male and female, learn all of the living and survival skills uh, on a very equal level. And then they may share tasks. The mer, the mermaids and the mermen both go out hunting together, uh, and bring back whatever they bring back. They both jointly defend uh, the settlement that they live in, and uh, they uh, don't have specialized professions and things like that. They do have uh, specialized roles as far as. Very few of the males uh, have any magic ability because that is something that is passed down uh, through the mermaids themselves, which is why they have, most of them have some magical abilities, just as you saw when you were being escorted by Kina, that she had some magical ability and she wears a pouch that she's got some magical items in, right? Whereas the males tend to be more uh, martial fighters, using uh, long, very long knives and using tridents and things like that. Some of the females also uh, are martial fighters as well, but the males are rarely magic users, and most of the females have got some innate magic using ability. Other questions? <laughs> um, right. Well, I may have mentioned to you that. Um, my companions and myself are, are on a mission that was assigned to us. And so I'm wondering, how do you plan to reconcile taking me away from a mission assigned to me by Arwan, Lord of the Dead, ruler of the Shadow Realm? He doesn't seem to me to be the sort of person who would uh, take kindly to somebody shirking from their responsibilities. And well, if I'm going says. to be away from that for 40 years, <laughs> you may have to reconcile a little bit with that. Nereo says, well, if I decide that you should to be away from that for 40 years, I can decide that you can be away from that for a lot longer than that. Because Arwan has his realm, and I have mine. However, that does not mean that I am not open to some kind of negotiation with him. For most of his interests and my interests coincide in this case. I believe his exact words were, these are obligations of family, blood, and you hold them to me. True. You would hold them to him. 
And if you're in his realm, he could certainly claim it. He has no such claim in my realm. However, the mission that he has charged you with based on what I have heard from you is something that is also in our interests because of the problems that, that we have got, especially with the north coast of our Gulf. So I do not want to stand in the way of our one's mission. At the same time, I don't see any reason why the rest of your party could not carry on while you stay here with us. Well, he specifically said that I was the only one that could really deal with um, the man known as the Iron Fist, um, who is actually my uncle uh, in, from Tara, uh, who has disgraced the family name by being here, and what he has been doing here has become a disgrace to the family name, and I alone must deal with that. Norail thinks for a moment, and he says, well, I think that these are all excellent subjects for us to continue to discuss after the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have uh, any, any other questions or things you want to discuss before we proceed? No, mostly just my responsibility to R1. Uh, Lord of the Dead, ruler of the Shadow Realm. Hmm. Uh, Nereo becomes very serious at this point. He says, he says, in truth, I have every intention of honoring both. And uh, I've got a solution, and we, we'll discuss that uh, after we uh, complete the festivities. And with that, by the way, I also wanted to... Um, uh, let you know that uh, we've sent for your companions, and uh, they are here. Oh, are they? And um, just outside the the hall doors, uh, should I have them brought in? I would very much like to speak to them. Okay, so uh, at this point, he makes a signal, and uh, word is passed out to the merfolk that are outside and uh at the doors the guards and uh they um usher the rest of the four of you in uh this whole hall is filled with merfolk there's there are hundreds of them lining the hall on both sides uh, they obviously expect something important is supposed to happen very soon at the far end the rest of you for the first time catch sight of this massive merman with long white beard and white flowing hair who's three times the size of everybody else on the rail and you can see at the far end thaddeus's little <laughs> bowler hat as he stands in front of him and he ushered down this long long line of um of merfolk to the front when you get there what do you do i embrace him as as a fellow comrade thaddeus well, we have missed you well mr redfeather whatever you're doing in such a damp place <laughs> well we we seem to have been spun into this and may uh, i introduce you <clears throat> to um Nerea, king oh. of the merfolk and um soon to be my father-in-law well congratulations old boy that's a great thing. Now, where is your wife? So, uh, at this point, uh, Kina, who is actually on the other side of the rail, comes around and looks at uh, all of uh, Thaddeus's companions and sizes them all up, uh, trying to figure out who they are. Catches sight of the two females. Don't you. <laughs> and... First of all, you know, it, it becomes pretty obvious that she's wondering if there's some kind of competition here. But then she clearly decides that since Thaddeus was alone, mm. uh, that obviously these must be the mates of the other two males. And these are two couples that have come to join Thaddeus. Obviously. And um, uh, 
so uh, she she uh, turns to Thaddeus and comes up beside him and uh, takes his hand in hers and sidles right up to him just as kind of a kind of a uh, sign to uh, these two females that have arrived that uh, he belongs to her now. Define belong. Well, they would consider that uh, apart from Nereo being the father of all of the uh, of all of the merfolk, because their society is a society where one of the duties of all of Nereo's daughters is to find and capture a landsman and charm him and make him their husband, that it's it's a matriarchal society that has a patriarch as a father. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So they tend to be fairly, you know, equal as as um, husband and wife as far as their personal relationships. But when it comes to deciding what's going to happen in their merfolk society, first of all, Nereo, whatever Nereo says goes. Uh, beyond that, though, the mermaids are responsible for the actions of their husbands. They are responsible to their father. I have a feeling these two are going to get snatched and us two are going to get murdered. Just saying. <laughs> well, I mean, whatever would happen wouldn't happen unless Nerea wanted it to happen. Okay. I, I'm hoping they're more civilized than that. And, you know, as indicated by the fact that they do have a beautiful sculpted temple of some sorts, I, I suspect they don't do acts of random murder so hopefully i, I did actually uh, mention so the mission a, that a we're presence on. of yes. a temple means that they're not capable of murder no it means that well, they have a civilization that's fairly well structured so implies that murder and, and I, I did mention a rather urgent mission that we were on assigned yeah. thank by you Arwen, thank you for lord that. of the dead yeah. ruler of the shadow realm <clears throat> so at this point nereo asks thaddeus he says and so these are the ones the, are these all of your companions, or are there more besides these? Well, I think there's a wolf somewhere, but but, but he's, we've sort of lost touch with him. Don't. With a, there's a there's a what? A wolf. Uh, I don't know, and Nereo doesn't know what this word means. Bear. This word <laughs> wolf means, yeah, and asks it's an, what it, it, it's a it's an animal, uh, a pack animal, that has bonded to Miss Smith. Uh, let me make introductions. We have uh, Mr. Alexium, Miss Smith, Miss Rose, and Mr. Redfeather. And so it is the five of you that uh, R1 has charged with uh, this mission? That is correct. I see. Your Majesty. Although we can use all the help we can get. Uh, so Nereo, at this point... Uh, waves the rest of it away and says well that's enough of that i think it is it is uh time uh for us to uh proceed uh time is of the essence so uh he uh waves his hand and as he does so um <coughs> i gotta see if i've got a screen that i can show you as he does so um you are escorted into another hall you see nereo turn and lead the procession into another hall and um all of your companions are kind of led away to a side table while you and your new bride-to-be proceed to uh one end of what is obviously the head table of your uh, i love that <laughs> it's got the bowler there you go so the rest of the evening uh is basically filled with all of the festivities that you would have with a regular wedding strangely enough there's no uh ceremony that that uh, you're giving an oath or anything like that apparently you have the wedding banquet and uh yep you're married that's it. Can, you, can, I'm curious, what are we eating? Uh, mm -hmm. You're eating, apparently, they bring out all different types of platters. All of them are various types of seafoods. 
clearly stands to reason. There are things like you can see uh, little prickly urchins that have been opened up. Uh, you can see um, um, uh, things like lobsters, uh, small squids, all of it, all of it raw. I wondered about that too. Yes, none, none of it is cooked. Apparently, Sushi. they don't have any problem with that. One of the things that you notice as uh, the merfolk around you are feasting and eating, and you guys, all the companions are off at a side table, but one of the things that you notice is that they have no problem picking up these things and just biting into them, and you realize that they don't have teeth exactly like yours. Their teeth, most of their teeth are pointed and very sharp, and they have no problem just And not one of my groomsmen is wearing a tie. Mm. Rude. And not one of your groomsmen is wearing even a shirt. <laughs> and the ladies are happy. <laughs> I'm not happy about any of that. Strangely enough, as you as you notice uh some of the male merfolk that are down the table, you can clearly see some of them have got uh rather horrific scars. Uh sometimes it'll be a scar across the body or across the face, even one that has lost an eye. You also notice that uh, more than a few of them have tattoos, clearly tattoos from their previous life as a sailor or a uh, landsman, oh. that kind of thing. The, the scars are probably from them telling their wives to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious, these are, these are sea folk that have been, or like regular um, land dwellers that now have got tails. Yeah. They've turned into merfolk. Well, they they don't always have their tails. They've got the ability to switch I from. See. Okay. The, they can morph <clears throat> their legs, whichever suits them. So, for example, if they want to move through the water, obviously it would suit them much better to morph uh, their feet into one single fish tail so they I can see. move very quickly. But if they want to, for any reason, uh, stand on two feet to walk around, whether either when they're out of the water or something like that they they morph to regular feet it's like the best existence ever turn me into a merfolk thank you they're able to do both breathe underwater and also mm. breathe air no problem as part of uh, the magic of their species right now the reason that the former landsmen are empowered with that has to do with the fact that every single one of them on their right arm has this large gold mm. armband and a smaller version of the <clears throat> same is on the right arm of uh, their female mates. Have we noticed that Thaddeus has this armband? It has not been placed upon him yet mm. until the end of the banquet. Ah. Which is coming up. Anyone want more? <laughs> Anyone still hungry? Well, I don't so know. So, are are doing. are we privy to this um, this ceremony that that's what's going to happen? I, I think we're at the kids' table, so uh, yeah, I, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, yeah, we're, so we like, can discuss amongst ourselves, okay. but I, I don't. Think well, I don't we can. like. Do yeah. we know that once he gets the armband on, that's that? Thaddeus doesn't even know that. Okay. <laughs> nope. So it's 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 not. I don't think. I would get that, or I don't think we would get that. No. But maybe it, if it makes sense. I mean, the the sailors all have it, so they've all turned into merfolk. But it could, to my mind, be just because they're hanging around. I don't know. Yeah, we'd haven't made the association between the armband and the and the morphing yet. Mm -hmm. You have minders with you, and that is uh, some merfolk that have been charged with your care. First of all, serving you, and also making mm -hmm. sure that you don't get into trouble either on purpose or accidentally uh and uh they most of them speak latin uh, especially the uh you you find that that m many of the uh females uh do not speak latin well at all they tend to revert to some type of tongue that you don't understand but uh most of the males who were former landsmen are all quite comfortable in latin and they will freely discuss uh, details with you about things because 
they themselves uh, used to be, you know, as I say, used to come from a world similar to yours. Okay, so I'm going to ask one of these mer folks uh, that are serving us. I'm going to say, you know, if our uh, fella gets hitched here, like what what kind of chain does he have? Like, has he got to be here all the time, or can he come adventuring with us afterwards? Like, take a little break after the honeymoon nuptials. So uh, the minder who's who's uh, that you're speaking to, his name is Capsis, <laughs> and uh, Capsis says that uh, that is all entirely up to Nereo hmm. and Nereo certainly uh, will you know charge um, uh, even groups of of us as as um, to go out hunting or to go on expeditions or to do missions for him even to visit other settlements of Merfolk so whatever he decides uh, is what is what will what will happen So I think it's down to us to persuade him. Okay, so or down to us to I, I would find a way like to, to rescue have a Thaddeus and get with, the heck out with of with here. My bride. <laughs> What's that, well, Thaddeus? What do you want to do? I would I would also like to have a conversation with my bride, who is sitting right beside me. All right, so mm-hmm. Kina is sitting right beside you, um, <clears throat> and uh, what do you want to ask her, um, darling? What is the next step of the ceremony? <laughs> Darling, what's the next step of the ceremony? Like, what what, what are all the steps? <clears throat> Akina looks at you and says, well, when we are finished uh, the meal, then it uh, will be time for the bonding. And then after the bonding, uh, it will be, uh, we will be uh, carried off to... Uh, uh, the place uh, where we will consummate our uh, marriage. And uh, after that, <laughs> Gulp. <laughs> uh, after that, uh, tomorrow, Father will decide what, where it is that we are to go and what we are to do. Great. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're gonna get the tail. <laughs> oh. You made the tail joke last last game. I did. I, I gotta make it. Again. But he made it again. It's still I, funny. I, I'm just being flippant. He's literally going uh-huh. to get a tail. Mm-hmm. All right. So the any anything else that uh, you want to ask him? <laughs> so so when you say bonding. What exactly do you mean are, are, are the duties and responsibilities of the husband and of the wife? She Jeez. looks at you strangely like, do you not, do you not have the same husband and wife relationship? Well, I know what world? it is up here, but, but things seem to be a little bit different down here. And I just may, want to make sure I'm not making any mistakes because if I am committing to you know, raise a family together with you for 40 years, it just does put a little bit of pressure on me for my commitment to our one Lord of the Dead, ruler of the Shadow Realm. Uh, at that point, Kina says, well, if we have, uh, if we have little ones, then uh, it could be that we will both raise them together, but it could also be that uh, you will be left to raise them while I go to do other things. Right. <laughs> it will be entirely up to father, depending on what he decides about what you have said about Arwan. Yes, well, like I said, I don't he didn't strike me as a man who liked to be disappointed in having people back out of their responsibilities. And she says, and I will tell you this, if if father says that I must go with you then I will do that, but I am not looking forward to it because I do not want to leave my people. I can understand that. And I respect that. So, uh, at this point, um, uh, it looks like the feast is coming to the, to an end. And Does anybody re- want any more? <laughs> so, I'm just going to... do. 
I'm just going to talk to um, Madam Lavinia and say, Madam Lavinia, I, I know that you have a cantrip to communicate. Can you tell Thaddeus that I've got some invisibility scrolls if that's necessary? Mm-mm. Thaddeus. <laughs> but the problem is that we are many, many leagues underwater. Well, one problem at a time. I'm okay. still going to reach out. <laughs> if we escape, we would have trouble getting to the surface, right? Well, that's a good point. And they, don't, they only good, last for a minute, mind. Maybe we should let him have his fun and then go. Well, there's that too. He could get a, you know, some interest. She's a lovely catch. I don't know why he wouldn't want to. Yeah, reel her in. Sure. Because yeah. he has obligations. Hello. We're on a mission. Yeah, but look at the treasure. Yes, yeah. yes. So, so he would get some booty. Why aren't you getting married? You know, look at the treasure. Yep, That's yep, a good yeah. deal. Definitely like wants such a commodity. Daddy, yeah. are you able to hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Remember, she's not going to hear. It's just going to be me talking to you, and you can talk to me, and I'll okay. be here. Okay. I am supposed to let you know that raven has some scrolls of invisibility we're not quite sure what to do with those yet but they are available great um i really have no idea how they could come into play here um the latest news is i was talking about darwin wife and um as like soon as, to be correct or is she well as, as soon as the banquet's over then then the bonding happens Interesting. So if if any of you want anything more, I would be very happy to order seconds. I like fish. You're like sweating. I can see it. <laughs> Are you getting cold <laughs> fin? Cold fin. Yeah, that's great. So the wedding does eventually, I mean, the bank <laughs> does eventually come to an end. <laughs> As it comes to an end, all of a sudden the merfolk uh basically spring into action uh and they clear away all of the tables and uh clear a long aisleway up to Nereo who is sitting on his throne at the far end. Where is it? There we go. Waiting now. Uh for you to approach and he has on his lap uh, the two gold bands, you can just barely see him. You can't see him in this image very much, but he has on his lap the two gold bands uh, that he is waiting uh, to present to you when you get to the front. So the processional music, is it a slow march? Appreciating the the gravity of the situation, I I think I would approach very slowly and respectfully. So it wouldn't be. Yeah, he's not tap dancing down the aisle. So uh, one of the things you notice that Kina is actually quite nervous too right now, and you can actually feel her physically trembling as she has got her arm in your arm mm. as you move to the front. Are you all right, darling? And um, uh, she says, yes, fine. And as you get to the front, uh, Nereo lifts up from his lap these two bands that he's got, a smaller one and a bigger one. He hands them out to you. And waits for you to take them. All right. And he says, by taking these bands, <laughs> you hereby agree to be bonded for life as merman and mer wife, <laughs> I guess, and uh, waits for your response. Um. I will reach out and take them you in my take hand one and, 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 and turn to other. my... And she takes the other one? Oh, okay, yes. I was going to turn to her. and She takes the big one and you take the little one. 
And then... I don't understand what this means. It means that you are going to place her band on her arm. Ah, okay. And she will place the larger band on your arm. I thought she was going to wear the pants. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. She is anyways. But, uh. All right. I, I turn to her and I offer her the band. All right. She holds out her arm for you to put it on. <laughs> It Lancing around is the room actually and opened her. into two halves. Yeah. So it closes over her arm like this. That's what I thought. Are you sure you're all right, dear? She's holding out her arm and, and is trembling a little bit, but uh, she is very, very, you can tell it looking in her eyes, she's a very, very strong-willed person. All right. Do you sure you want to do this? <laughs> she says yes. All right. So <clears throat> I put the band on her arm. All right. She reaches the other band over, waits for you to place to put your arm forward so that she can <coughs> clamp it onto your arm. She clamps the other one onto your arm. As the second band clicks closed onto your arm, it begins to glow with an intense blue light, just as hers does. Yeah, and that's this what light I passes from one <laughs> to the other. And any type of hinge or any type of gone. seam or anything else that might have been there before disappears from both bands, and they are now uh, permanent. Well, I never thought I'd be getting married at my age. but There's a huge cheer that goes up from all of the merfolk, and there's all types of, 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 of joy and happiness. Uh, many of the mermaids uh, gather around... Uh, their sister whereas uh the mermen gather you up and they start carrying you off down the end down uh the end of the hallway <laughs> get a grip <laughs> okay. so uh they carry you out of the hall uh and uh they uh uh, seem to be uh, carrying you through the, the city. Um, you are encouraged uh, to follow for a little while, all of your companions. <laughs> As they carry you through the city, they stop at one point, and uh, it's indicated by the merfolk to your companions that here is a place for you to stay for the night. And there's uh, one of the one of the openings into the big um, conglomerate that is their city uh, that uh, you are ushered into. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a small, uh, not too small, but a small room that's got several, they look like giant sea sponges for beds for you to, to rest in that night. Hello, Patrick. There's, there's uh it's uh, there's warm water that's bubbling out through a couple of vents so it's actually quite warm in the room and um uh this what is about crazy. windows and doors there's only one door right in the front there are a couple of other smaller round or portal windows uh but they don't actually have any glass in them or anything like that they're just round portal openings Besides the rounded door open. And curtains. And there are no curtains. Whatsoever. Oh, goody. Now, this is where your companions are staying. The merfolk continue oh. on with you oh. to the outskirts of town. Of course they do. And, in fact, they leave the town with you just out to the very edges of the town. Uh, and as they come out to the edges of the town. I've just been run out of town. <laughs> you see ahead of you. Uh, a few of the of the female uh, mermaids waiting, and um, the merfolk uh, get to them, set you down, point, and uh, there's a couple of big coral banks, and there's uh, a bit of a lane that goes through them somewhere, and they point for you to proceed on alone. Okay. As you <clears throat> proceed on alone. Uh, they leave. You see them departing back to the city. And you are left 
moving down this little place into what is some type of grotto uh, in the coral. As you uh, get through the grotto in the coral, you come uh, around the corner, and uh, this is what uh, confronts you. You see this giant clam bed. Your bride has now got a veil on and whatever her bridal dress is, and she is waiting for you in uh, this clam bed that's in this private grotto. Well, her entourage certainly moved quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and there are lobsters and crabs singing in the background, <laughs> little Disney songs. Would you please get the girl? Yes. Uh, and so you are uh, left there with your bride for the evening, little bubbles bubbling up everywhere. Bubble curtains close Thank you. over the camera. <laughs> and uh, uh, that is the end of uh, the scene. And that's going to be the end of the session. We're going to take a 10-minute break. Yep. And then uh, we're going to find out what happens the next day. Did you eat some oysters at dinner? Oh, my God. There's plenty to eat there, so maybe he did. Okay, we're going to just my. switch it off. Go ahead. Uh, we'll be right back. Uh, send, it, send us back to Be Right Back screen. Be back.